Hello guys, this video is about Active Directory interview questions for your quick reference. I will be covering total of 39 questions. Let's start without wasting time. First question. What is Active Directory? It is a distributed database by which we can manage the resources like users, computers, group, printer etc. Database path is, see Windows, NTDS. Second question. What is Domain Controller? A Domain Controller is a server that responds to authentication requests and verifies users on computer networks. In simpler terms, when a user logs into their domain, the DC authenticates and validates their credentials and then allows or denies access. Third question. Domain Controller versus Active Directory? Active Directory is a type of domain, and a Domain Controller is an important server on that domain. Fourth question. What is Syswall? The Syswall folder keeps the contents such as users, group policy, etc. and they are replicated to all domain controllers in the domain. File location is, see Windows, Syswall. Fifth question. What is LDAP? The lightweight directory access protocol is an application protocol for querying and modifying directory services running over TCP, IP. Directory access is performed via LDAP, whenever a client performs a search for a specific object in AD, say for a user or a printer, LDAP is being utilized to query relevant objects and return the correct results. Sixth question. What is Global Catalog? The Global Catalog contains a complete replica of all objects in Active Directory for its host domain, and contains a partial replica of all objects in Active Directory for every other domain in the forest. Seventh question. What is trees? A tree is a collection of one or more domains and domain trees in a contiguous namespace, and is linked in a transitive trust hierarchy. It is a set of domains sharing a common network configuration, schema and global catalog. Eighth question. What is forest? A forest is a collection of trees that share a common global catalog, directory schema, logical structure, and directory configuration. The forest represents the security boundary within which users, computers, groups, and other objects are accessible. Ninth question. What is trust relationship? Parent and child domains are automatically linked by a trust. Users in different domains can use these trusts to access resources in another domain assuming that they have access. Trees in the forest are linked together via a trust automatically. This ensures that any users in any domain in the forest can access any resource in the forest to which they have access. Types of trust are external trust, realm trust, forest trust, shortcut trust. Tenth question. What is sites? These are the objects that represent the physical locations of DCs and or client machines. Typically, every defined site should have at least one DC, and the sites should match the physical locations the servers are in. Always prefer servers in the same LAN be in the same site, and separated by a WAN should be in separate sites. Eleventh question. What is subnets? A subnet is a segment of a TCP, IP network to which a set of logical IP addresses are assigned. Subnets group computers in a way that identifies their physical proximity on the network. Twelfth question. What is site link? Site links connect two or more AD sites together and should match the physical network connections among the sites. For example, if you have three locations that have full connectivity to each other, then you could have a single site link that contains all three sites. Basically this would tell how Active Directory should communicate directly with each other. Thirteenth question. What is KCC? KCC is a built-in process that runs on all domain controllers and generates replication topology for the Active Directory forest. The KCC creates separate replication topologies depending on whether replication is occurring within a site or between sites. So guys another question here is difference between intersite and intrasite replication. In intrasite replication, all the domain controllers inside the same site will replicate each other. Whereas in intersite replication, selected domain controllers of two different sites will replicate during specified interval. Fourteenth question. How to check replication between DCs? We have rep admin tools through which we can monitor and troubleshoot the replication issues. Commonly used commands, rep admin, repl summary, rep admin, show repl, rep admin, kcc. Fifteenth question. What is netdom? Netdom is a command line tool that allows management of Windows domains and trust relationships. Primarily used to query the FSMO roles. Sixteenth question. What is NTLM authentication? Interactive NTLM authentication involves two systems, a client system, where the user is requesting authentication, and a domain controller, where information related to the user's password is kept. 
Non-interactive authentication involves three systems, a client, a server, and a domain controller that may be required to permit an already logged on user to access a resource such as a server application. 17th question. What is Kerberos authentication? The Kerberos authentication protocol provides a mechanism for mutual authentication between entities before a secure network connection is established. The strong cryptography and third-party ticket authorization make it much more difficult for cybercriminals to infiltrate your network. 18th question. Difference between NTLM and Kerberos? NTLM uses a three-way handshake between the client and server and Kerberos uses a two-way handshake using a ticket-granting service key distribution center. In Kerberos the client must have access to a domain controller which issues the tickets whereas in NTLM the client contacts the server which contacts the domain controller. 19th question. What is FSMO rules? Five types of FSMO rules are as follows. Schema master. The schema master role manages the read-write copy of your Active Directory schema. The AD schema defines all the attributes, things like employee ID, phone number, email address, and login name, that you can apply to an object in your AD database. Domain naming master. The domain naming master makes sure that you don't create a second domain in the same forest with the same name as another. This DC is the only one that can add or remove a domain from the directory. RID master. The relative ID master assigns blocks of security identifiers set to different DCs they can use for newly created objects. Each object in AD has an SID, and the last few digits of the SID are the relative portion. PDC emulator. The PDC emulator responds to authentication requests, changes passwords, and manages group policy objects and the PDC emulator tells everyone else what time it is. Infrastructure master. The infrastructure master role translates globally unique identifiers, WID, SIDs, and distinguished names, DN, between domains. The DC responsible for updating an object SID and distinguished name in a cross-domain object reference. Twentieth question. Can we keep GC and infrastructure place in single server? No, because both does the same role. Since a global catalog server holds a partial replica of every object in the forest. As a result, cross-domain object references in that domain will not be updated. 21st question. Different between transfer and seize role? Transfer of role is done when the current role holder is operational and can be accessed on the network by the new FSMO owner. Seize of role is done if the DC is broken, example hardware defect, and will never come back again. 22nd question. What is domain and forest functional level? Domain functional levels enable features that affect the entire domain and that domain only. It also controls which Windows Server operating systems can be run on domain controllers in the domain. Forest functional levels enable features across all domains within a forest. It also controls which Windows Server operating systems can be run on domain controllers in all domains in the forest. 23rd question. How to take backup of AD? We can backup AD by taking the system state backup and the best practice is to take the backup of domain controller having the FSMO roles. System state backup can be taken from via Windows Server Backup via PowerShell or GUI. Third party tools can also be used. 24th question. What system state data contains Active Directory Database and SysVol Shared Folder? Certificate Services Database, Cluster Database, Boot Files, System Files, and Files Covered by Windows File Protection, Windows Registry. Performance Monitor Counter Configuration Data, Component Services Class Registration Database. 25th Question. What is AD Recycle Bin? It is a feature which needs to be enabled as it is not done by default. With this the deleted Active Directory objects are preserved and can be restored in their entirety to the same state that they were in before deletion. For example, restored user accounts automatically regain all group memberships and corresponding access rights that they had immediately prior to deletion. 26th question. What is authoritative and non-authoritative restore? Authoritative restore is most commonly used in cases in which a change was made within the directory that must be reversed, such as deleting an organization unit by mistake. Once restored it replicates to and overwrites all other domain controllers in the network to match the restored DC. Non-authoritative is used most commonly in cases when a DC because of a hardware or software related reasons, this is the default directory services restore mode selection. Once restored, the domain controller then through replication receives all directory changes that have been made since the backup from the other domain controllers in the network. 
27th question. What is ADAC? The Active Directory Administrative Center is a tool with which you can administer Active Directory. Unlike the legacy Active Directory users and computers Snap-in, which continues to be supported, ADAC was built as a graphical interface on top of Windows PowerShell. 28th question. What is RODC? RODC is a read-only domain controller that contains read-only Active Directory database copy and response to security authentication requests. Usually used in a remote location. 29th question. What is Active Directory Schema? Active Directory Schema is a blueprint which describes the rules about the type of objects that can be stored in the AD as well as the attributes related to these objects. The schema thus defines the content, and the structure of the object classes and the object attributes used to create an object. 30th question. What are the Active Directory Partitions? Schema Partition. Configuration Partition. Domain Partition. Application Partition. 31st question. What is SPN? A service principal name is a name in Active Directory that a client uses to uniquely identify an instance of a service. An SPN combines a service name with a computer and user account to form a type of service ID. 32nd question. What is RPC? A message passing facility that allows a distributed application to call services that is available on various computers on a network. Used during remote administration of computers. 33rd question. What is Tombstone lifetime? A Tombstone is process in Active Directory that define how long deleted object can be restored. The default value to keep the data is 180 days. 34th question. When does lingering object occurs? When a domain controller is disconnected for a period that is longer than the TSL, one or more objects that are deleted from Active Directory on all other domain controllers may remain on the disconnected domain controller. Such objects are called lingering objects. 35th question. Difference between enterprise admins and domain admins groups in AD. Members of the enterprise group have complete control of all domains in the forest. Members of the domain group have complete control of all domains in the domain. 36th question. What are the group scope? Domain local group is used to grant permissions to domain resources that are located in the same domain in which you created the domain local group. Global group can be used to give permission to access a resource like a printer or shared folder and files, available in local or another domain in same forest. Universal group The purpose of universal groups is similar to both global and domain local, but membership is listed in the global catalog for easy lookup. 37th question. What are the group types? Distribution groups are used for distributing messages to group members. Distribution groups are used with email applications, such as Microsoft Exchange. Security groups can also be used to for the distribution of email. Their main purpose, however, is to allow administrators to assign permissions and user rights to group members. 38th question. What are the ports associated with Active Directory? W32 time port number is 123 UDP. RPC is 135 TCP. LDAP is 389 both the protocol. LDAP SSL is 636 TCP. Global catalog is 3268 TCP. DNS is 53 both the protocol. Kerberos is 88 again both TCP and UDP. SMB is 445 TCP. FRS and DFS is from 49152 to 65535 TCP. 39th and final question. What are the new, improved features in the AD from its previous version of 2012 and 2016 respectively? At first new or improved features you can say which were updated from 2008 to 2012 versions are Dynamic access control, direct access offline domain join, Active Directory Federation services, Windows PowerShell history viewer, Active Directory recycle bin user interface, fine-grained password policy user interface, Active Directory replication and topology Windows PowerShell CMD lets, Active Directory based activation, group managed service accounts. Next new or improved features from 2012 to 2016 are Conditional Access Control, Multi-Factor Authentication, Azure AD Join, Azure AD Connect Health, Deprecation of FRS, Privileged Access Management, Group Membership Expiration, Microsoft Passport for Authentication, Time Synchronization Improvements. That's it from me. I hope you liked this video waiting for your feedback and suggestions. Please like, share and subscribe.